you'll find that they share the same melody, which makes it very nice for you. Very nice. one of course is the glory to God so let me teach you the very beginning of it and you'll find that a lot of the melody stays the same through each section different melodies all the way through that and they carry throughout this entire mass setting. Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Bonaventure Catholic Community today as we celebrate the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We have some beautiful readings today about forgiveness and God's merciful love. Please take a look at the bulletin for the article titled, Archbishop's Dream for Our Parish. As you remember, Archbishop Hebda had numerous listening sessions to hear what people wanted to see in order to improve the church in this area. The top request was to bring back personal connections through small group discussions. The result is a great program to reconnect parishioners through small groups, which will begin over Lent. To prepare, we invite any of you who are interested in a leader formation series to sign up on the parish website or by asking one of the SET members at the table in the back of the church after Mass today. We're excited to go through this formation together with you. Saturday, September 30th is the annual St. Vincent de Paul Walk for the Poor. This is our biggest fundraiser to help people in need. The group operates our food shelf and helps our poorest neighbors in many ways. The group embodies the spiritual and corporeal works of mercy. They will accept signups or financial gifts next weekend, so please prayfully consider a donation and bring your checkbook. <laughs> next weekend, Father James will have more information to share about our faith formation program, but for now, please get your children's registered. 
We will begin as planned on Wednesday, September 27th here at St. Bonaventure in our regular classrooms. And last but certainly not least, we have hospitality after Mass today. Please come enjoy a treat with and visit with your fellow parishioners. We have been through a lot of changes the past few years, but our fall festival always reminds us of our strength when we gather together. So more than ever, we want to share fellowship with the community which is built on our common faith in the goodness of God. Please join us. Today's Mass celebrated by Father James. My name is Paul Sedler. Our opening song is in the hymnal number 964. Please stand now and greet those near you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Father. And welcome to celebrate the 24th Sunday of Ordinary Time. And as we gather together, seeking God's mercy upon us, let us also acknowledge our sins, so that we may be better prepared to offer this Holy Eucharist. Lord Jesus, your cross and resurrection signaled a new beginning of peace and reconciliation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are comfort to those who seek forgiveness and healing. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us a new commandment that we love one another as you have loved us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. Look upon us, O Lord, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice, then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who was but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days. Set enmity aside. Remember death and decay, and cease from sin. Think of the commandments. Hate not your neighbor. Remember the Most High's covenant, and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. And then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who desired to settle accounts with his servants. When he began, to, began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgive him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owned him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, Pay back what you have. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged, Be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole story. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant! I forgive you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay by the whole debt. So will my heavenly father do to you unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
God is good. Our God is good. And all the time. Dear sisters and brothers, today's readings are really challenging. They highlight one of the most difficult themes that Jesus taught and lived. Forgiveness. In our own lives, when we experience being wronged and often the ongoing consequences of an injustice being done to us, our hearts can almost naturally default to what Sirach in today's first reading describes to hugging hateful things with wrath and anger hugging it tightly he writes we do this as we cope with the pain of betrayal the shattering of dreams and the realities of how our lives have changed due to injustice done but it is supernatural to begin to let go and to live in the freedom that Jesus promises us and that only Jesus can give us for if we keep hugging on to the anger and wrath we instead live a life of misery and imprisonment to what has befallen us because friends i need not tell you that unforgiveness is self destructive and unforgiveness blocks all the graces and blessings that can flow from god to us forgiveness is not the only difficult teaching that jesus gives to his followers saint paul in today's second reading is likewise very challenging inviting us to live not for ourselves but for god if we live we live for god if we die we die for god whether we live or we die we belong to god these guidelines for the christian life have never been easy to live out but as today our culture moves from its christian grounding and values they can become even more difficult to put into practice this can leave us with wondering questions like how can we come to better understand and live what jesus is talking about and he lived in his life while there are probably multiple answers to these questions one great way to be supported in living out the difficult aspects of our faith and helping those around us is by participating in small groups for a shared and participated growth in our christian life to have sisters and brothers in christ in our lives with whom we can walk the christian journey on a regular basis with whom we can share struggles with whom we can receive encouragement and correction to do the right thing when tempted to act on to ungodly thinking and our archbishop hebda fortunately realizes the important role that the small groups can play in helping us live as faithful catholics and to provide a safe place for people who don't yet do not know jesus to come to know him and to live their faith better as a result Archbishop Hebda is asking 
all the parishes in our archdiocese, including ours, to begin the small group ministry. If you remember, we left this um, references some time back, maybe in June, when we had the commissioning of the 12 apostles from our parish. You, do you remember that? <clears throat> this whole plan and invitation to the small group ministry was just something invented on a day. It had its history of four rounds of consultation throughout the arts rises with the laity and the clergy. And then that resulted in the voting that took place during the Synod Assembly in last June during Pentecost. And he made the conclusion that all parishes would have a small group ministry begun at least by Ash Wednesday 2024. He asked each pastor to name this team of 12 we call Synod Evangelization Team. And this team has been preparing through the Catechetical Institutes, School of Discipleship, and were commissioned as we witnessed that in the month of June to take some initial logical steps for our community. Now it is time to prepare leaders for the various small groups that will begin during Lent. The team have thus been inviting fellow parishioners to participate this fall series of training to be potential leaders of the small groups starting September 28th, that day is very close by, in our parish with the two sessions during daytime and during evening time. And if you are among those who have already been asked by those team to participate in this leadership formation, I thank those who have already said yes. I am confident that there are others in our parish who would make great small group leaders. My hope is that all parishioners will take advantage of the Lenten opportunity to begin to walk the Catholic faith in a deeper way by being part of a small group guided by those who go through the training this fall. And our goal is that no one will be leading their groups on their own, but will have the support of other trained team members. And the topics that are discussed in the small groups can vary greatly from Bible studies to marriage preparations, helping young families, to friends sharing the faith, to service-oriented groups. This flexibility allows small groups, especially as they gain experience, to focus on topics of interest to them and the parish to have a wide variety of small groups rather than a narrow range of options. Dear sisters and brothers, as we face not only the challenges of our life, but also the challenging teaching of Jesus, like the call to forgiveness, unless you forgive from your heart, your Father in heaven will do the same to you. It's like a warning. <laughs> And it's scary. Therefore, the need not to hug tightly to the wrath and anger, but let go. So that invitation is challenging. And perhaps these initiatives would somehow help us in our journey to better practices so that we can certainly gain strength and support from those around us. And therefore, let us be open to consider 
walking in a new and deeper way with our fellow parish nesh through the small group ministry. In particular, let us be open to the question, is God inviting me personally to take a step into that deep way of knowing him by learning how to lead small group? To some, this invitation may seem as challenging as forgiving someone who hurt us. Even though we might know deep inside we need to do so. To others, it might bring the joy evidence as we heard from St. Paul's message of living for the Lord, belonging to the Lord and not for ourselves. So dear friends, for while small group leadership may not be what God is asking of you, there is some service to which you are called. When we all embrace that to what we are called, we will see an incredible renewal in our parish community and in our archdiocese at large. And may the Lord bring that grace upon each one of us. I will humbly invite, as it was announced at the beginning, to have a look into the fourth page of our bulletin today, where you will have all the information necessary, whom to contact, where to connect. Perhaps I think today we may not have someone at the back of the church, but tomorrow morning they will be there to help you with any questions. Thank you and God bless you. Let us express our unity of faith by praying together. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, Consubstances with the Father. Through him all things were made. For his men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life to the world come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, our readings today are about how we treat others. Knowing we are in need of God's forgiveness, let us humbly ask God to help us love others as we also ask him to listen to our prayers for ourselves and for all those in need. For the success of the Global Synod, and especially the efforts in our Archdiocese, may we step forward to participate in small groups which strengthens our faith and the common values we hold dear. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the September intention of Pope Francis, for those living on the margins of society and inhumane conditions, May they not be overlooked by institutions and never consider of a lesser importance. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For those in public office to assist the victims of natural disasters, violence, abuse, or mental health issues. May God inspire all those who can help.
to come to the aid of those vulnerable. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the St. Bonaventure Catholic community, may the Holy Spirit fill the hearts of our pastor and staff to strengthen them during these challenging times and to come to guide the right people to become part of our parish staff. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick or suffering, especially Kevin Tafe and Kay Pelletier, may they know God is present in their pain and healing. And for those who have died recently, such as Jim Archer, brother of Steve, may they rejoice in seeing the face of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those, those whom we have promised to remember in prayer, for the intentions of today's Mass, which is the Memorial Mass Association, and for the special prayers we hold in the silence of our heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear. Merciful Lord, we ask you to forgive us as we forgive others. Teach us to love others even when they hurt us. Protect us in your mercy and hear these prayers which we ask in the name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise of your For our good and the of the Holy Spirit. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may bring back salvation to all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation 
always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father creator of the world and source of all life for you never forsake the works of your wisdom but by your providence are even now at work in our midst with mighty hand and outstretched arm you led your people israel through the desert now as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world you always accompany her by the power of the holy spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through jesus our lord and so with the angels and saints we too sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim were indeed holy and to be glorified our god who loved the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life blessed indeed is he were son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when as once for the disciples so now for us he offers the scriptures and breaks the bread for us therefore father most merciful We ask that you send for the Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this sacred mystery. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the last supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, "Take this." all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when suppose and that he took the chalice and gave you thanks and gave with the chalice to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me the mystery of faith Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Look with favor on the oblation of your church. in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us 
and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the end of eternity among the members of your son in whose body and blood we have communion and so having called us to your table lord confirm us in unity so that together with the francis our pope bernard our bishop with all the bishops priests and deacons consecrated men and women and your entire people as we walk your ways with faith and hope we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever there in communion with the blessed virgin mary mother of god saint joseph her most chaste spouse with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs saint bonaventure our patron and with all the saints we shall praise and exalt to you through jesus christ your son and our lord through him and with him and in him o god almighty father in the unity of the holy spirit who all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever At the Savior's command and formed by his divine teaching, let us join our voices to pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ who said to your apostles peace i leave you my peace i give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever amen may the peace of the lord be with you always and with your spirit and united in his love let us offer each other the sign of peace peace be with you Behold the lamb of God 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O oh Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and our bodies, so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail within us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your servant. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love God, love others, and make disciples. Thanks be to God. And wish you all a very blessed evening. Thank you, Father.